Blake's prepping here. As long as I've been growing my own vegetables, I've had to deal with the occasional nuisance of animals either digging up my seeds, picking at my plants, or tearing up the soil looking for worms. Well, these days it's mainly birds, squirrels, and chipmunks, since the tall fence tends to keep out deer, rabbits, and most other critters. I've tried the whole hanging pie tins on a string thing and a bunch of the other classic methods to keep away the critters, but with pretty limited success. I got the fake plastic owl, which has had absolutely no effect, and on a number of occasions I've even seen birds perching atop it. I've long thought about making some sort of scarecrow or similar, but a stationary scarecrow will probably be about as ineffective as the plastic owl. I love the idea of something that moves around and is activated by the movement of a small animal. Now you can buy these motion activated sprinklers that are sold for this exact purpose, but I didn't want to go that way for two reasons. One, it seems like a huge waste of water, especially if it's turning on all the time. And two, I don't like the idea of leaving my water turned on all day long with nothing but a finicky motion sensor keeping it from spewing water. So I started thinking about how I could build my own contraption, something I could place near my garden boxes that would move or flail around whenever it detects motion. Fast forward a couple months and I ended up with what is certainly the most ridiculous thing I've ever built. A DIY motion activated solar powered remote controlled critter startling machine that I've named the Scarecrowbot 9000. And in this video I'm going to walk through how I put it all together share some of the mistakes and complications I experienced, and demonstrate the Scarecrowbot in action. So let's do it! I had a general idea of how I wanted this thing to look. First, I needed a box of some sort to serve as the base and also hold most of the components. I wanted it to be water resistant to some degree, and this short, wide, plastic ammo can ended up being perfect. Using some spare PVC pipe, I put together a basic framework and vertical mast and attached it to the ammo box with some threaded fittings. I wanted the mast to be tall enough that there would be plenty of clearance for whatever spinning arm I went with. I wanted the spinning part to have a somewhat wide radius to maximize effectiveness in getting the attention of any nearby critters. The whole thing is a 12 volt system. I'm using a regular 12 volt sealed lead acid battery and I had this 12 volt motor from a cordless power drill that fit perfectly into the assembly I made out of various PVC fittings. Next, I had to think of something to use for the rotating arm. My original idea was to have this thing spin ropes or tassels or something but I realized I needed something rigid to keep the ropes, or whatever, away from each other to prevent tangling. I needed to find something rigid and flat, but somewhat lightweight. A cheap yardstick ended up being the perfect dimensions and weight. So with the motor installed and the battery charged up, it was time to do my first test. It became immediately apparent that this drill motor was much too powerful for my application. I want something to spin and scare off a bird or squirrel. I'm not looking for something that will vaporize a bird instantly. It's clear that I need to tone down the speed of this motor, so I incorporated a basic rheostat speed control into the circuit. Next was the motion control switch. I first tried a motion sensor switch that would ordinarily be used for an exterior floodlight, but after attaching it to the box and wiring it up, I learned that my switch was bad. I was pretty annoyed considering I drilled a big hole in the box just for this thing, but what can you do? While shopping for a new one, I learned something that made me not want to use this type of switch anyway. While you can set the delay, that's how long the switch stays on after activating, the shortest amount of time you could set it for was 4 minutes. I definitely want something much shorter than that. I want my contraption to run for seconds at a time, not minutes so I looked for other options. I ended up going with a different, smaller type of motion sensor switch and attaching it to the front of the box with some Velcro tape. 
This switch is actually sold as a motion switch for LED lighting that goes inside of gun safes. Open the door, the light automatically comes on, and then automatically turns itself back off after a predetermined amount of time. You can still adjust the sensitivity, that's how close or far your moving subject can be before the switch activates, but the delay settings allowed for a much shorter time. I went with about 5 seconds. When I wired up the motion switch it worked perfectly, for a minute. After trying it a couple times I noticed a little smoke, then a lot of smoke. The circuitry inside the motion switch basically caught on fire. Turns out I completely fried the switch because it's meant to be used with small LED lights and not a huge cordless drill motor. So I did something that I should have done in the first place and took some power readings on the motor with a universal power supply. Turns out it draws way more amps than I realized and this draw was just absolutely too much for the tiny wiring and circuitry of this little motion switch to handle. Okay, so the concept works. I just need to rethink my execution a little. So I added a small relay to the mix after buying a replacement for the motion switch I fried. The tiny motion switch will now tell the relay when it's time to turn on and the relay will complete the circuit and turn on the motor. This means that no draw from the motor is touching the motion switch whatsoever. And while this ended up working, I realized that the motor is still just too powerful and the amount of amps it's drawing is insanely high for what I'm doing. That amperage makes sense for the sort of lithium ion batteries and circuitry used in a cordless drill, but it just does not make sense for what I'm doing here. I concluded that I simply had to find a different motor. It took me a while to find just the right motor, but I found a 12 volt gear motor with a much lower RPM, but still plenty of torque to turn the arm. Now that all the essential components are in place, it's time to add a few bells and whistles. First, a basic toggle switch to turn the whole thing on and off. But then I decided I really liked the idea of being able to activate and deactivate the whole system from a distance. So I added a remote controlled switch. I still left the simple toggle in place because the motion switch still draws a little bit of battery power even while off since it's always waiting to receive a signal. I wanted to be able to completely turn off everything when the system is not in use. Next, a simple LED light which will serve as an indicator when the remote switch is turned on. When the green light is on, the system is armed, meaning that it will start spinning as soon as it detects motion. Lastly, I thought, how convenient would it be if the battery never died? So I slapped on a cheap 12 volt solar panel, and now the whole thing effectively charges itself while deployed outside. And in case you've already lost track of all the components in this circuit, here's a quick shot of my wiring diagram. Now it's pretty much ready to try out. I'm really happy with how well this thing works so far. If anything gets within about 10 feet of it, it activates. The arm spins for four to five seconds and then stops. The switch also has about a seven second refractory period before it will activate again, which is perfect because otherwise the motion of the arm would just continuously reactivate the motion switch. But I just couldn't stop thinking that something was missing. My original idea involved spinning ropes or tassels or paracord or something, but after seeing the whole thing in action, the idea just didn't impress me anymore. Then it hit me. I need to kick the scare factor up a notch, and there's nothing scarier than a whirling tornado of one of your most feared natural predators. A couple rubber snakes, a couple zip ties, an adjustment on the motor speed control to compensate for the extra weight, and now I can stand back and proudly behold my masterpiece. As you can see here, I conducted a series of highly scientific controlled trials with very promising results.
And I'll add that the sight of these ridiculous flailing snakes delights me to no end and may be among the funniest things I've ever seen. But my elation was somewhat short-lived. After dozens of flawless test runs, a wayward snake wrapped itself around part of the frame and stalled the motor and ultimately caused it to burn out. So while I really, really love the spinning snakes, I ended up removing them because this contraption is basically pointless if I can't leave it for hours on end without monitoring it. So I replaced the motor again and released the snakes back into the wilds of my junk drawer. My hope is that it will still be effective without the snakes, but the only way to know for sure is to set up a hidden camera and let the scare crowbot go to work. I will mention that right now it's currently the dead middle of summer, which is basically the only time that birds and other critters seem to have very little interest in my garden. So in the name of science, and in the name of finishing this video that's already been two months in the making, I set up the machine near a pile of bird seed so I can attract some real-world customers and see it in action. After reviewing a few hours of video, I would say I observed mixed results. It definitely worked sometimes, but it definitely didn't work every time. Out of every critter I observed, the tiny chipmunk was the funniest. Not only did he use the scarecrow itself as a stepping stone to get to the birdseed, but he was absolutely unfazed by the motion of the spinning arm. I watched this little guy come and go several times, and he could not have cared less. Then we have this black squirrel. To my frustration, he doesn't even trigger the motion sensor at this distance. But in comes our chipmunk, who does trigger it, at which time the squirrel bugs out with much haste. But then he comes back a few minutes later, as does the chipmunk. And once again, the squirrel hightails it after the chipmunk sets off the trigger. Okay, so this thing is clearly effective against squirrels, as long as you can also deploy a tactical chipmunk to activate the machine. Next up, we have a rabbit and a cardinal. Once again, the motion sensor should definitely activate at this range, so I'm getting pretty annoyed. The rabbit moves in while the skeptical cardinal stands by. But wait, Mr. Blue Jay swoops in just as the rabbit triggers the motion sensor and both birds get out of dodge. But now I have a bunny, who by the way, I never even knew liked to eat bird seed, munching away. And the ridiculous thing about this rabbit is that 8 out of 9 times, he could not care less about the swinging arm of the scarecrow. He repeatedly triggers the sensor, but just has no interest. But on that ninth time, for whatever reason, he decides it's time to bail. Now the cardinal's back and gets to have a taste before eventually triggering the sensor and getting scared off. This right here is my desired effect, aside from the fact that it took nearly 30 seconds for the motion switch to activate. And now the blue jay is back and gets his fill before leaving on his own accord, having never triggered the sensor. And lastly, Mr. Bunny has returned, and it's pretty much the same as last time, with the addition of a brief spectator. He'll repeatedly trigger the device, but absolutely does not care about the swinging arm. Right up to the moment that he does. So, while I'm pretty happy that all the features and components of my contraption work in concept, I'm a little disappointed in its real-world efficacy. I've already begun planning some improvements for Scarecrowbot version 2. The motor is very quiet, and at a slow speed the rotating arm doesn't really make any sound. The motion is also very smooth. I think I need a little noise and some motion that's a little more erratic. Those rubber snakes sure took care of the erratic, and I may have to revisit that idea and figure out a way to ensure that they can't get snagged on anything. I need to work on the positioning of the motion sensor. It obviously works, even with something as small as a chipmunk, but it's somewhat hit or miss at a distance of a few feet away, even with a critter larger than a chipmunk. I think the sensor's effective radius may be being reduced by being so close to the ground. I might need to affix it higher up and angle it downward. Lastly, without the extended radius achieved by the snakes, or similar, the spinning arm may be too far away from the ground to be much of a bother to these determined woodland creatures. 
Anyway, stay tuned for an eventual follow-up after I've made this thing even more ridiculous. Don't forget to like and subscribe and stay up to date on all our latest stuff. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Great Lakes Prepping.